In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary. And she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, flow of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to thy word. Hail Mary, flow of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, forth to beseech thee, O Lord, thy, Lord, thy grace, grace into our hearts, our hearts that, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known, known by the message of an angel, an angel may by his passion and cross be brought, brought to the glory of his resurrection, resurrection through the through same the Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. May the divine assistance always remain with us. Amen. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel, Hosanna in the highest. My dear brothers, and we have been prepared during this season of Lent with almsgiving, prayer and fasting. We now come to commemorate the entry of our Lord into Jerusalem. This Sunday is known by two names, Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday. Palm Sunday because when Jesus entered into the city of Jerusalem, people welcomed him as a victorious Messiah shouting Hosanna. However, within that week, five days later on Good Friday, it is likely that the same ones who shouted Hosanna also shouted crucify him. Each one of us represents those who shouted Hosanna and who shout crucify him because this is what we do. For the grace on this Sunday in our loved Lord. Let us now pray to bless the palms. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory be to you, O Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you will find a cold tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says, Why are you doing it? Say, Lord has need of it and will send it back here immediately. The disciples went and they found outside in the street and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they let them go. And Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. And he sat on it, and many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from. And all men before were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. The gospel of the Lord. 
Praise the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. And now as I enter, I press the choir to begin the Hosanna hymn. before you on this Palm and Passion Sunday with our hearts open to receive your word. Give us the grace to assimilate that word, to ponder it in our hearts and to bring forth plentiful fruit. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Kindly sit down for the first reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backwards. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our response will be, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him, for in him he delights. Our response, my, my God, God, my God, God why have you forsaken, forsaken me? me? For dogs have surrounded me, 
A band of wicked besets me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. Our response, my, my God, God, my, my God, God, why, why have, have you forsaken, forsaken me? me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. But you, O Lord, do not stay afar off. My strength, make haste to help me. Our response, my, my God, God, my God, God why, why have, have you, you forsaken, forsaken me? me? I will tell of your name to my kin and praise you in the midst of the assembly. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All descendants of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. Our response, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippines. Jesus Christ, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the end of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for the gospel. Jesus gave himself up for us so that we, in turn, might give ourselves up for others. Praise, praise, praise be to Jesus, now and evermore. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Lord. One moment, I suggest you sit down so you can listen attentively to the gospel. Kindly sit down, the gospel is long today. Relax, breathe deeply so you can listen attentively to what Faith is reading. Faith, go ahead. It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by some trick and have him put to death. For they said, Not during the festival, for they, lest there be an uproar from the people. Don't go to sleep. Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. He was at dinner when a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the ointment on his head. Some who were there said to one another indignantly, why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they were angry with her, but Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing for me. For you want, you, you can do good to them whenever you want. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not have always have me. She has done what she has done for my burial, and truly I tell you, before my body is anointed, that whenever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, approached the chief priest with an offer to hand Jesus over to them. They were delighted to hear it and promised him money, and he looked for a way 
to betray him when the opportunity should occur. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. The disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and prepared for the Passover. When evening came, he arrived with the twelve and while they were eating at the table, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were distressed and asked him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It was better for him if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took some bread, and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them, and all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for all. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. After psalms had been sung, they left from the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he repeated still more earnestly, I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. They came to a small estate called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Then he took Peter and James and John with him, and a sudden fear came over him, and great distress. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even unto death. Remain here and pray. Watch. And going on a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, this hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, all things are possible for you. Remove this chalice from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. He came back and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came back and found them sleeping. Their eyes were so heavy, and they could find no answer for him. He came back a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Even while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up with a number of men armed with swords and clubs sent by the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the traitor had arranged a signal with them. He had said, the one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. So when the traitor came, he went straight up to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The other, seized, the other seized him and took him in charge. Then one of the bystanders drew his sword and struck out the high priest. 
and cut off his ear. Then Jesus spoke. Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all deserted him and ran away. A young man who followed him had nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the cloth in their hands and ran away naked. They led Jesus off to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes assembled there. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the high priest's palace and was sitting with the attendants, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus on which they might pass the death sentence, but they could not find any. Several indeed brought false evidence against him, but their evidence was conflicting. Some stood up and submitted this false evidence against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their evidence was conflicting. The high priest then stood up before the whole assembly and put this question to Jesus. Have you no answer to make? What is it that this man testify against you? But he was silent and made no answer at all. The high priest put a second question to him. Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming to judge with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his robes and said, What future witness do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all gave their verdict. He deserved to die. Some of them started spitting at him and blindfolding him, began hitting him with their fist and shouting, Prophesy! And while the attendants rained blows on him, while Peter was down below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's servant girls came up. She saw Peter warming himself there, stared at him and said, You were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the forecourt. The servant girl saw him and again started telling the bystanders. This man is one of them. But again he denied it. A little later, the bystanders themselves said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he started calling curses on himself and swearing. I do not know this man of whom you speak. At that moment, the cock crew for the second time, and Peter recalled how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. He burst into tears. First thing in the morning, the chief priests, together with the elders and scribes, in short, the whole Sanhedrin, had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He answered. You have said so. And the chief priest brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again. Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. At, for the, at festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now a man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowd went up and began to ask Pilate the customary favor, Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed Jesus over. The chief priest, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should release Barabbas for them instead. Then Pilate spoke again. Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back. Crucify him. Pilate asked them. Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the louder. Crucify him. So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed, them over, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace and called the whole cohort together. They dressed him up in purple and twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on him. They began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed and spat on him, and they went down on their knees to do him homage. 
And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the, pla the place called Gol Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him. They shared out his clothing, cast lots to decide what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription given, giving the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. The passerby jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, Aha, uh -huh. you who would have destroyed the temple and rebuilt, rebuilt it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. The chief priests and scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way. They said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was a darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani. This means, my, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. Someone ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Let us remain silent for a few moments. Please continue faith. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he had died and he had said, Truly, this man was the son of God. There were some women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary who was the mother of James the younger, and Joseph and Shalom. These used to follow him and look after him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up to see Jerusalem with him. It was now evening, and since it was preparation day, the vigil of the Sabbath, there came Joseph, Joseph, a prominent member of the council, who himself lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God. He went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, astonished that he should have died so soon, summoned the centurion and inquired if he was already dead. Having been assured of this by the centurion, he granted the corpse to Joseph, who bought a shroud, took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped him in the shroud, and laid him in the tomb, which had been hewn from rock. He then rolled a stone against the entrance of, to the tomb. Mary of Magdala and Mary the mother of Joseph were watching and took note of where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. There are three points which I will take from the gospel for our reflection this afternoon. And the first of these is the prayer of Jesus. We can learn from the last line of the prayer of Jesus how we must pray. And the last line of the prayer of Jesus in Gethsemane says, Give me what I want. Take this cup away from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. So we ask for what we want. We tell God clearly what our need is. But then, we say also, yet, not as I will, but as you will. The second point is what happens at the death of Jesus. And there are two incidents which take place. The veil of the temple is torn 
from top to bottom. The curtain of the temple is torn from top to bottom and the meaning of this event is this, that God has abandoned the institution. The veil separated the holy place from the holy of holies. And behind the veil was the tabernacle where God dwelt. So when Mark tells us the veil is torn, it's rent open, God is no longer there. God is accessible, God is available, but where is God available? On the cross. So now, worship is not in a shrine or in a church, worship is on the cross. And the third event is linked with the second, that is, when the centurion witnesses the way in which Jesus dies, he points to the crucified Christ. He points not to Jesus, but he points to the crucified Jesus and says, truly, this man, the man on the cross, the man who spread his arms out in surrender, the man who held nothing back, including his own life, that man is son of God. And Paul summarizes this for us in the second reading of today when he tells us that Jesus emptied himself. Jesus gave everything right from the beginning. Jesus had said that he has nowhere to lay his head even at the end of his life, he was laid in a tomb which was a borrowed tomb. His disciples had run away. Every one of his close confidants was nowhere to be seen. Strangers, Joseph of Arimathea was the one who buried him. And so my brothers and sisters, from this day on, we are going to enter this holy week. The blessed week where we try to take in the mystery. Let us ask God for the graces which Jesus received first. To say like he did, not as I will, but as you will. Let all the prayers that I make, including the Nabina prayer which we will say today, end with these words, not as I will, but as you will. Let us remember. Second, that our Lord is now available to us on the cross. We don't need to go to any church. We don't need to go to a shrine. We can have our God with us in our hearts because this God is on the cross. And the God who is on the cross is Son of God who suffers and dies so that we might live. Let us thank God for such a God in Jesus. Kindly stand up now as we profess our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From, from there, there he will he come, come to judge, judge the living and the dead. dead. I, believe I believe in the, believe in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, Church the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, sins, the resurrection of the body, of the body and, and life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. We turn to our Lord with our prayers and our petitions. Our response is, Lord, make us truly humble. It's here on the whiteboard. All together, Lord, Lord make, make us, us truly, truly humble. humble. We bring before you, Lord, world leaders, political leaders, presidents, prime ministers, church leaders. And we ask that you bless them with wisdom so that whatever decisions they make, will be made through the promptings of your Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make us truly humble. We pray for our country, India, which will soon enter into this beautiful dance of democracy, 
the elections. That the elections might be fair and just. That each one of us who has the right to vote will exercise that right and vote in our conscience for the ones who work for unity and especially for the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make us truly humble. We pray for our state of Maharashtra. It is known as the great state. We pray that the leaders of this state might also be blessed with the gift to realize that it is only when the poor are cared for that life in all its fullness can be lived. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make us truly humble. We pray for our city of Nashik. That everyone who is in charge of different areas of the corporation might work for the good of humanity rather than for individuals and under pressure. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make us truly humble. For all of you gathered here, my dear friends, my brothers, my sisters, who have come from so far because of your devotion to the infant Jesus, to those hundreds and thousands of our brothers and sisters participating online, that God will give you the grace of your desire of your heart, but will also give you the grace to say, yet not what I will, but what you will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make us truly humble. Father, hear the prayers we make aloud. Hear the prayers of our hearts and grant what is best for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now you have come here, my friends, because of your devotion to the infant Jesus. I ask you to bring that faith Believe that what you are praying for is received. If it is the Lord's will, kindly remain standing if you like, or you may kneel for the Nabina prayer to the infant Jesus. If you can do neither, you may remain seated. Altogether, if you know the prayer with me, it's here now on the screen. Altogether. O oh, Jesus, you said... Make your petition boldly and courageously, but kindly make a petition for another person also. All together, O oh Jesus, you said all that you ask of the Father in my name, he will grant you. Make a second petition. Don't restrict yourself to one. But kindly make a petition for a second person also. All together. O oh Jesus, you said heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass. Through the intercession of Mary, your most holy mother, I feel confident that my prayer will be granted. Make a third petition and kindly make a petition for a third person also. We make this prayer, dear infant Jesus, in your name who with the Father and the Holy Spirit live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Kindly sit down if you are standing or kneeling. United in my body with Jesus the Lord, we bring to you our offering of bread and wine, O God. We are the wheat of Christ. If we be crowned in the middle 
Stand. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. We offer you, merciful Father, along with these gifts of bread and wine, the numerous time we have not worshipped you on the cross but worshipped you elsewhere. We ask you to give us the grace to realize that true worship is now not in a tabernacle, not in a temple, not in a church, but on the cross. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is right and just that we must praise and thank you at every single moment of our lives. In a very special way this afternoon, Father, we thank you for opening the eyes of our hearts to the realization that Jesus held nothing back when he gave himself in the fullness of time after you sent him to be our savior, our redeemer, our hope. For such an incomparable gift as Jesus, we praise you along with the saints and the angels as we sing a song of joy. we pray that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took a chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. resurrection 
we offer you, Father, this bread of life, this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Barthol, our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Mary, ever virgin, mother of God, blessed Joseph, with the apostles and martyrs, we may be graced to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us pray now as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us Lord from every evil Grant us peace today. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all kind of useless worry as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you are saying to us this afternoon, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the little faith we have. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. See, my brothers and sisters, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say your word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. When you come to receive communion, kindly stretch out your palm. Kindly stretch out your palm. An act of spiritual communion. Heavenly Father, you loved the world so much that you gave your only Son. This Son was the manifestation of the love that you have for the whole world, for the whole of humanity. Because he wanted to be present with us eternally, he chose the form of bread, which we receive when we are privileged to participate in the Eucharist. At this time, Lord, some of us are homebound, some are in hospitals, some are in places where we do not have the privilege to receive the Lord physically. This is why we make this prayer, because we know 
that nothing is impossible for you and that you will come into our hearts as really and as tangibly as we would want. We pray that with Jesus in us, we might become more and more like him every day. Mary, our mother, mother of God, we ask you to place us with your son. And we ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen.
Thursday, the 28th of March, is Monday Thursday. There will be no Mass on Monday Thursday morning or evening except the celebration of the Lord's Supper at 7 p.m. I repeat, on Thursday, the celebration of the Lord's Supper will be at 7 p.m. All these Easter Masses will be online. If you are in Nashik, you're welcome to join us in person. If you are not in Nashik and elsewhere in the country or abroad, you're welcome to join us online 7 p.m. on Thursday, this Thursday, 28th of March, Monday, Thursday. On Friday at 11 a.m., we will have the Stations of the Cross in the church and in the afternoon at 5 p.m., we will have the celebration of the Lord's Passion. Saturday at 8 a.m., being with Mary, a reflection on the seven sorrows of Mary. And our Easter Mass on Saturday is at 8 p.m. I repeat, our Easter Mass on Saturday is at 8 p.m., also online. On Easter Sunday, the 31st of March, there will be four Masses as follows. 6.30 and 8 a.m. in English. 10 a.m. in Marathi and 12 noon again in English. If you are here in Nashik, you're welcome to join us for any or all of these celebrations. I want to thank you once again for your generosity and for your dedication. You may have noticed we do not pass the collection boxes around because we don't want to take a risk of any infection. Secondly, we don't want anyone to see how much you are putting. Somebody puts there, somebody sees how much they're putting. So we don't want anyone to check what somebody else is putting. You can put as much as you want. But remember, infant Jesus is looking how much you're putting. Let us pray. We thank you, Father. Because despite being sinners, unworthy, you have looked at us worthily and have shown it by giving us Jesus. We pray that with Jesus in us, like him, we might add to all of our prayers, not what we will, but what you will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. May God, our loving Father, who loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, fill your hearts and your homes with every good gift grace and blessing amen may jesus our savior unafraid to go to the cross because he loved unconditionally and flame your hearts with the gift of his unconditional love amen may the holy spirit the paraclete who exists in our hearts even today fill you with the gift of unconditional grace and peace amen may almighty god bless each one of you the father the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go to love God because His Son loves us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Stones of 
open bar and bath and there are times that fall But you are always there to help me when I fall